First of all, thank you very much. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, well, this picture, of course, is, she's doing a pose, but it's exactly the way she worked in the living room with her typewriter in her lap. And everybody was around, the children and the, the maids and, and everything, the telephone. She didn't uh, stay apart to do her writing. Uh, so this is a, really a, a funny picture to, to have this idea of the typewriter on your lap, which is not that comfortable, but that is a kind of a Clarice's uh, brand. She was known for that. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, she used to um, wake up very early in the morning, let's say like four or five o'clock in the morning, uh, get her coffee in a, a thermo that the maid left in the day before. And then I heard her typing uh, from my room. So it was a, a very nice noise to, to, to hear. I, I knew my mother was, was working and, and the sound of the typewriter, most people don't know what is a typewriter nowadays because everybody uses computers, but uh, it sounded like uh, raindrops on the, on the window. So uh, a few years ago, uh, I, I heard some raindrops on a window. I thought, well, maybe it's my mother typewriting. So that, that is what uh, it remember. Well, I, I think that uh, an easy approach would be from the chronicles and the short stories. I recommend very much the uh, most recent short stories that are, are very modern and easy to understand. And, and then you could go further on to read The Hour of the Star, and, and which is not that difficult. And then when you are very mature, you go to The Passion According to G.H. And then I think you're, you're a Cla Clarice, in Clarice's team mm -hmm. by then. But her language is not common even in Portuguese. She mix up the words in another sense. Uh, it's a, a little bit like reading poetry. You, uh, you get the sounds of the words, how they get together, and it's more of a feeling. Uh, you don't have to understand it with your, your, your brain, but you feel it with your heart. And then it, it's a composition of brain and heart. So it's, you, you have to put yourself in a different position to start. It's not uh, so, so, so easy. Yes. But it's worthwhile. <laughs> so uh, yes, I started my, when my mother died, I was 23. And uh, before that, she even didn't want me to read her books. I really started after she died. I, I read the, uh, mostly the, the columns in John Aldo Brasil, the Chronicles, and uh, sometimes one, one uh, short story or, or another. Um, even that when there was a play based on the, the near to the uh, wild heart. Uh, she didn't let me go. As in, in the introduction to the passion according to G.H., she says quite uh, in a decisive mode, this book is to be read by people with the soul already formed. So, Definitely, I was not formed. I, I read it later. And uh, uh, many uh, people from uh, are doing uh, nowadays movies from, from the novels. And one of this is uh, almost impossible to think how would you do it, but it was done is the passion according to G.H., which was 
is ready. I saw it many times, but due to the pandemic, it was not released yet. So next year, certainly you will have that. And it's very impacting. It's a, uh, half Alfred Hitchcock, half Antonioni from wow. Italy. It's, it's wow. surprising. Yes, what I did in this afterward was clarify that Clarice had uh, a very important uh, a, a social questioning. Uh, living in Brazil, it's impossible not to have this. Uh, but she wrote mostly uh, introspective uh, books. But this doesn't mean that she was not aware of the hardness of Brazilian life for the least uh, uh, people that are not so so well established. Uh, just a, a small correction, she, uh, Clarice studied law but never practiced, so she was not in fact uh, a lawyer. She studied law and during the, the law school she had jobs as a translator, as a journalist, but never practiced law. But she was interested in social justice. And, and then I go on in, in uh, many other texts that she has uh, that I, I put together explaining how her participation in, in this uh, social question was existing because uh, many people were surprised that only in her last book she would take care of this matter. If you look at the passion according to G.H., it's also uh, a very uh, there's a, a very social question in the, the, the script. Uh, you can say that the the, the character G.H. had a, a maid, and that she never recognized the maid who, in fact, was 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 black, uh, and already makes a difference, but she didn't even remember her name. So it makes a how uh, social classes were separate in Brazil and the server was was black and not noticeable. Uh, yes, she was always listening to classical music. So we, we had that all around. Uh, I would say Beethoven was very popular. Uh, uh, maybe strong com composers like Beethoven or Rachmaninoff, uh, sometimes uh, something lighter like Chopin or Debussy. Or, but she either had her records, and this uh, is all in the archives uh, available for anybody to, to check, or even she would listen to the classical music station Brazil that is very good. And so music was uh, never uh, popular music, always. Uh, and sometimes I, uh, we shared the, the records and, and in some books she even uh, put some remarks about the, she talks a, a lot about music in the introduction of the hour of the star you have all the composers she, she thinks about yes we have been working on the letters by uh, almost 20 years uh, now and then we have been adding uh, new new letters and recently we we made a professional research in archives and and, and public and, and private archives, and we found a, a lot of very interesting things. Uh, half of the books of the book is are letters uh, to my my aunts, uh, Clarice's sisters, and to myself. So you have a lot of uh, family uh, uh, questions, but you also have letters to fellow writers. And, and uh, why does somebody write letters? Because she lived almost 20 years abroad. So she missed too much her, her family and friends and 
writing letters was a, a way to, to be in touch. And uh, what I like most of the letters, and this is why I'm so enthusiastic uh, to, to pu publish, is that they were never intended to be published. And they were never revised. They, they were uh, just on the flow of the pen. And, and it's something uh, really magical how she, uh, she had this dominance over the words. And whatever she wrote uh, sounded uh, very, very special. And not when she was writing a book, with, which was a brainy thing, you had the heart, but, but it's very important to see a letter that was never meant to be published. Uh, so it it's, uh, was published in Brazil. It, it was, part was already published in France and in Spain and Portugal. And somehow it's already contracted it's, uh, to be published in the United States. I, I really think it will make a, quite a, a, an event. The fun of this uh, book is that all children ask. I, I have a granddaughter. She re read the book and she comes to me with many solutions. So it's, a, and it's an open question. And everybody is right to give her, because it's an unsolved mystery. So uh, th this letter is curious, because we found it in the National Library of Portugal. Mm -hmm. So we looked everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's a very early letter when she started to be abroad. And then she writes to Natercia that traveling is going from one place and coming back, one, going to one place and coming back. Not what I am doing. I am, I will be in a prison. She felt that being uh, uh, abroad was a prison and, and Naples was just her first stop. Uh, she was there uh, during the war and then she rested uh, almost 20 years abroad. So, so this letter is very important because she, she already saw how hard it would be. So 20 years later, she took the decision to come back to Brazil and, and, and move on from here. Well, one of the sentences that's very much repeated in Portuguese, liberdade é pouco, que eu quero ainda não tem nome. Liberty is not enough. Uh, what I want has not a name yet, so it's quite important. But uh, as a mother, she always uh, told us something like, uh, don't worry, if God takes care of the, the little birds, God will take care of you too.